One of the things that paging hardware enables is an optimization technique known as on-demand page allocation. So here's the idea. A process, if it wants more dynamic memory, calls the system call sbreak. So S break takes a parameter that says, how much more memory do I want? So the idea is we've got our process. And we have, let's say, text and the stack moving down. And we have this unused area here that we can choose to make bigger. So this is the heap. And we can, for instance, say that the heap is this big, and we want to say we want to make it bigger. So we call less break, say I'd like to have an additional, I don't know, let's say one megabyte. Okay, so now the heap will be at this size instead. So that's S break. Um, and the simple and straightforward way to do that is when the user calls S break, we figure out how many more pages are going to be needed for the heap. We go ahead and allocate physical pages for each of those desired pages and go ahead and map them in. The tricky approach is to say, well, I am not entirely sure that the process is going to actually ever, is going to necessarily use each of those pages. Imagine, for example, that the process is allocating a sparse array, right? So it's allocating a big array and it turns out, though, it's going to only use a few parts of the array. So it's going to be sparse. So there are many pages in this array. Let's say this is array is many pages big. There are many of these pages that are never going to be touched. If that's the case, why ever even allocate them? But how do we know which pages are going to be touched and which aren't going to be touched ahead of time? We don't. So the solution is when the user asks for these extra pages, maybe these extra virtual pages, we go ahead and pretend that we're there. Okay? We keep track of the fact that, yes, the user has asked for these pages. But in our corresponding page table, we mark all those. So let's say this is the amount that the user s braked. That's not the asked for. And so we make every corresponding page table entry invalid. And then when the process actually tries to, to um, access one of those pages, either read or write to it, it would go through the page table entry and we'd get an invalid page table entry not present. And that would cause a page fault. And then we're in the kernel, and the kernel can look and say, wait a second, this is the area that has already been allocated for S break. Okay, so the user asked for this, so therefore I better go ahead and allocate it now, on demand. And so let's say that the address was in here. In that case, we would go ahead and allocate a physical page for it, point to that physical page, and of course set the pivot to be present. So as far as the user is concerned, when they asked for the memory, they think they got it. And as they use the memory, it works. The difference is this called S break was actually very quick because there, was, there were no page allocations that were done. Individual interactions with that newly S break amount of memory can be some of them slow and some of them fast. Some of them will be slow if this is a page that has never yet been allocated. So that will require the kernel to allocate that page, point to it, or cause a page fault exception, and so on. But the process, other than differences in timing, the process is unaware of the fact that the memory was not actually allocated. The only issue one could run into is the process assumes that when the S break returns, the memory was actually allocated. That is, if 
the entire system was short of memory, then the S break could fail. And the process could then do something about that, right? Look and say, oh, I was unable to allocate this amount of dynamic memory. Maybe I'll allocate less, maybe I'll do something different, maybe I'll tell the user something else. Instead, the user is told from the kernel, oh yeah, that worked. However, it could be later on as the process is actually hitting those pages, which requires those physical pages to actually be allocated, might eventually run out. And that is fairly problematic because there's no way for the kernel to tell the application, hey, I really am trying to allocate memory right now just on your reading or writing a particular address, and I was unable to. So the best it could do really is exit the application, exit the process. So that's not a great thing. Uh, but that's where we get into backups that a kernel has. Like if it runs out of physical memory, what it can do is start writing physical pages actually to disk if necessary, or swap out whole processes, right? The entire process is memory. So one process has memory to disk to free up physical pages for other processes. So in practice, one doesn't normally run into this issue, but that is a potential concern.